Hello Mini Tales Tellers, welcome to a free class for the Grade 1 ABRSM. We're going to do the Arbo today, um, or a bit of it. We don't need to do all of them, all in one day. If this is your chosen piece, bravo. If not, you can have a listen, you can sight read it, you could see if you like it. If you're undecided about which piece to choose, then, then you're in the right place. Now, I would say this piece is for anyone who really enjoys the bass, uh, the C and the D on their cello. Playing these bass notes takes a, a different technique to playing the higher notes. You need to be slower, you need to have really good contact, otherwise you can sound muddy and dull. So in that respect it makes it difficult, but in another respect it's quite easy because these strings are right next to your ear and then near your heart and for some people that makes it very exciting also if you really like jazz and improv and blues these strings will put you in good stead so you, if especially if you you know if you like a sort of choppy feel so i'm going to recommend that you choose these if that's your bag okay um if you prefer something uh, a little bit more flowy and orchestral um, rather than bassy. Of course, the, we have a bass in the orchestra as well. Um, but it tends to uh, be the, um, the rhythm of the string section. Do you see? So um, this is for the cello exam piece... Uh, for the ABRSM grade one and it's um, from 2020 to 2023 so we've got a bit of time and if you've got an exam coming up these classes will help you a bit um, but I'm starting from scratch so this is a beginner's really a beginner's class okay and we're going to use the pan piano accompaniment to help us but I'm also going to help you with fingering and things like that now look if you want the score you're going to have to um, my my version of the score, that is. Um, you're going to have to pop along to my Facebook page, the Tale Teller Kids Facebook page, or to our Instagram. Um, I don't really use Instagram so much. I prefer the Facebook page. And you'll be able to see my annotations. Okay? So I'll write everything in there. We're, we're not going to do too much. It doesn't do to do too much in one sitting. OK, you need to split these sections up. So we're just going to go to bar nine before that key change. Now, what, what key is it in? It's in C major. OK, we, so we start on a C. That's nice, isn't it? A, an open C. Ooh, lovely open C. But it's quite loud. So, um, well, look, listen, let's play our section through a bit slower then we're going to play it through for the examination. Now, there's a couple of repeated sections. So although it sounds like it's going everywhere, it's actually not. Let's listen. the page is boisterous because I've slowed that down a bit it doesn't sound so boisterous but also what does boisterous mean it means a bit uh, I'd say energetic so really um, I mean you wouldn't want to play it that aggressively for your exam but it's a good idea to sort of practice that the difference because and it's also uh, moderately loud well, well, that's a comparative thing um later on in the piece it gets a, it gets quicker um i can't see the score actually ahead of me to see if it gets quieter 
so I, I better look. Hang on. So, yes, yeah, sorry, I have to... When you're on a computer, it's it's difficult, isn't it? Because you have to keep scrolling up and down. Um, bar uh, 15, you'll see a crescendo. So you need to save yourself. So although you can be fairly loud, you need to be even louder later on. I'm going to talk to you later on, when we get to bar 17 especially, but uh, bar 15 to 17 are really, really loud part. We'll talk about how to increase your volume. Okay, but for today, let's just look at this section we're looking at, okay? So let's look at, well, bar one is an intro. So we've got a count of four. And um, let's see what the pianist is doing. Let me move that. Let's have a listen. Okay, that's wrong. Let's try again. So, one, two, three, and four, and that's what the piano's doing. Okay, so that's sort of our sort of counting, okay? Um, but we don't do anything. Look, there's a rest there. There's a big old rest uh, for a count of four. So so we can... Um, well, I, I recommend you tap your feet or sing it. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I sing the first bar in my head to the timing because that sort of gets me in in the mood you know that gives me the flavor of it um so let's look at that first bar so we've got an open and then a one and then uh two threes and then a four so nothing too difficult there but You're going to want to do a little bit of... We don't want legato. I think we're going to do a little bit of a... How would I say? A bit of pushing in. But keep it really light. What you can do is you can just push in a bit with your forefinger. And it just gives the notes a bit of definition. Okay? Now you want the examiner to uh, know that you're enjoying it. So you want to be uh, somewhat dance-like and um, feet on the ground, obviously, back straight, etc., etc. But feel the, um, the importance of this boisterous uh, definition. So, so one, uh, one and two and three and four and... Um, maybe a bit longer on those I mean you can sort of get away with a little bit of staccato I think um, if you wanted to uh, because that adds a bit of boisterous flavour to it but obviously you don't want to be flying off the notes um, but I think uh, that's that's what I'd do and really define each note um, what else do we need to know well let, let's look at the next bar <laughs> Similar, similar, um, no notes that we are unaware of. We've done all those notes already. The It's similar in, in rhythm. We've got a group of quavers and two crotchets. What's, what's to, um, you know, worry is not a lot, not a lot. Now let's look at bar four. Well, <laughs> bravo. It's exactly the same as bar one. And uh, the next bit uh, is not the same as bar two, as I just did. So you need to be aware of that. But wait, you know, when you've played this a hundred million times, which we fully intend to do, don't we? Um, you will automatically know that you don't repeat those two bars. OK, um, so that's that. Now, what's next? Let's have a look. Ah, OK, so we're now we're going on to the next string. It's an open string. That's OK, isn't it? Um, is the fingering similar? Let's have a look. OK, we've got we've, we've got a bit to think about because we've got an open. And 
and then we've got one open and then rather lovely string crossing again do you see how the clarity is so important it's a bit sharp there okay next bar a little bit tricky three one three four open open okay three one three four open open you've got a, a different pattern of fingering um it feels very different it's certainly different to what you just did in the previous bar very very different so be aware be aware you've got to concentrate on that of course it's only going to be difficult the first time you play it after that it's going to it's going to be set in your mind and what what you should do when you practice is practice bar by bar and then two bars by two bars and then three bars by three bars four by by four etc okay and you only add a bar once you've played 100% correct the bit that you're already playing okay now of course what you can do is you can uh, go up in pairs or go down down in pairs uh, up in threes up in fours down in four. do you see what I mean you can do it that way if you don't feel confident enough to get through a whole section without an error it's difficult and then, of course, the closer you get to the end, the more you might think in your head, I haven't made a mistake yet, I'm probably going to in this bar. But if you know this song very well, that won't happen. Trust me, it will not happen if you know this song very well. But the other thing is, when you've got the music in front of you, always read ahead. And it's a bit like reading a book. You always read a line ahead when you're reading out loud. And then you cannot make any mistakes. And you do not rush ahead. You're only a bar ahead. You don't need to be... Well, look, if you're really, really good, you can be a whole page ahead. Um, you know, good sight reading requires almost a telepathic ability to know what's coming. But it's not really telepathic, is it? It's, you know, you've got the notes there. What, what, how? It's magic in a way, but in another way, it's foolproof. Nothing... Nothing can go wrong. You just read the notes, okay? And this is why we do lots of sight reading. And um, you should be, actually, if you're doing your grade ones, darlings, you should be sight reading every day for at least five minutes. So, you know, if you see in a charity shop or something, you see some music, and it doesn't matter how difficult it is. It doesn't matter if it's for what instrument it's for. All music is the same. If it's 20p or 50p, buy it and use it for your sight reading okay it's a really good way to um get you know improve of course it's difficult with the cello because we're using the bass clef but a lot of piano music has bass clef um that that we can do in it so you know you could get that and just read the bass clef i mean it's a fantastic idea super practice now where were we <laughs> done that line and now bar eight well that looks pretty similar to what we've just done now this one is also similar exactly the same as bar five so do you see what i'm saying about all these repeats there's nothing there the only bar that's slightly is uh you know slightly different uh, to think about is um bar seven so i will put little stars and hearts around that okay for you in a minute and as i say this will be on our facebook page and um we you know we've done we've practically done what have we done we've done half of it we've done half of our grade one if you're choosing this piece don't worry if you're not i'll be doing lots of other pieces as well okay now the next bit changes key and gets a bit faster and a bit louder so we have to think about that but not today we're not going to move on today so let's play it i'm going to slow this down to 79 bpm <laughs> up 
now. So if you're getting ready for your exam, I'm going to put it on the proper speed now, which is 88 BPM. Now, if you're getting ready for your actual exam, this is kind of what it should be sounding like now, OK? Um, now, I might have to press play twice. Hang on. I think we're all right. I think we're ready. Okay, so how do you take that to the next level? How do you ensure that you're going to get a really good mark in the exam? Well, you just enjoy it, okay? So as you're playing, make sure that you're very, very comfortable and breathe each bar. Now, this hasn't got any phrasing in it, but you can put your own phrasing on there, okay? So really think about which notes to accent. The first note of each bar is a very important note. So give it some welly, okay? But really take pleasure in all of the notes. This is how you make the audience believe that you're better at performing because you love it, you're enjoying it. You don't look tense and you're making a beautiful sound. OK, now your accompanist, your piano accompanist will be just that. They are someone who is there to accompany you. So they will follow you. OK, not the other way around. Of course, you're you're following them. Of course you are. They're keeping time for you. And the wonderful thing about playing with a pianist, um, it, with a piano, is that we can check that we're in tune, of course. And for that, it's absolutely superb. But... They, if you slow down, they're going to slow down, okay? So you could actually, you know, just take a little bit more phrasing at the, in, in that bar nine. And they will do the same. Because human beings don't play like robots, okay? But work on it, work on it. And um, always play along, of course, with the, uh, the grade one. You should have the piano accompaniment. Uh, on a you know on your computer at all times and play along to that but you know this breathing uh, when you play a piece is one of the most um, important things that will get you a high mark this sense of phrasing of sentences up and down and um, uh, you know uh, accenting or understanding where the start of the bar happens and and making each note really special and really really beautiful okay so that's my class for today my free class um, I'm going to do the, um, the the rest of this tomorrow and we're going to start looking at some of the other um, options also that we have for the ABRSM grade one piano choices for this year and next year and next the year after I believe so we've got three years so plenty of time to um, to work on this there's no rush is there there's no rush at all I do hope you enjoyed my class. I'm the tale teller and I do free classes every single day here from Royal Clarence Marina and on my cello and on my piano. Um, so you take care of yourselves and remember, if you're not enjoying it, don't do it. <laughs>